All right, so I want to take a, a second just to introduce, introduce our speaker. Mark Weber is a great friend of mine. We've got to know each other, what, through networking, Through right? networking. Through right. this particular networking group. And Mark is actually the founder, or one of the founders of Richardson Plano Networkers. And uh, as I told him a, couple, a few times, this group has great bones. And one of the reasons why I've invested a lot of time and work with, with the group myself is because not only the opportunity to learn from Mark, but also uh, we've assembled a great group of people, a great model, and um, I just think that he has a lot to share. Uh, he's an example of what you could do from things that you've learned in one of these uh, networking meetings. Uh, Mark's been networking now, use that kind of as your primary source for building your yeah, business yeah. For, for nine years, right? And, and on Weber on, Computer yeah. Services, he founded the company. If you ever wanted to say, how do I start a business and then build it based upon word of mouth or networking, this is a guy you want to talk to. So, uh, like I said, very proud and very excited for the opportunity here to have Mark Weber share with us uh, his learnings, what to do, what not to do. If you're not successful in networking or it hasn't worked for you, this is why he's here. So with that, Mark Weber. Um, and as Dave was telling you, uh, I started my business August 8th, which is just in a few days, 2008, just, you know, the beginning of the big layoff. Uh, and I, I had enough opportunities to, you're doing a great job, but we don't need you anymore. So I decided I don't need those bosses anymore. And uh, started my own business and tried something at the game, didn't really work. But somebody said, networking is where it's at. So that's how I got started. So this is to, the entire purpose of this is to help kind of give you the, the benefit of my experience over the last nine years of how to do networking and so forth, the do's and don'ts and the things that work and don't work. Um, so this is just saying it's a compilation. You have handouts that have a lot of this dialogue on it. Um, and when I first started, began, I was pricing myself at $30 an hour, which is a super bargain, you know, just to try to get some traction. And I made a little bit of inroads with uh, some direct mail, but that was costing me seven eight hundred dollars a month and i got like five or six responses it was very low return i was actually losing money in the deal but um, about january i cut that off so it wasn't too much of a commitment and i just basically had to go in and say i'm not gonna be in business if you keep billing me so uh, i took my head down um and so that's first thing i learned but then someone i used to work with at microsoft mentioned oh you need to go network and they invited me over to a networking event in Louisville. Uh, it's kind of a drive for me, but uh, that's where I got my feet wet and learned what networking was about. It's basically about building relationships where you go. So things I've learned along the way. Um, you want to be prepared. I'm going to hit a second. I'm looking at the wrong page here. Uh, so um, you want to. Be presentable. You only get one chance to uh, make first impression. So we were talking about that earlier. Uh, so I try to show up. I'm branded. I have my, my logo. I got my name tag. Thank you, Linda. And uh, I try to usually be in either doctors or jeans. Depends on if I'm under that under desks a lot that day is which one I'm wearing. Um, but uh, be presentable. Always have business cards on you. Um, how am so everyone carry about six to eight business cards every day. Yeah, this should be your goal to give those out every day, so that you don't run out when people ask for them. Uh, that's kind of my compliment when I get to the end of doing a good job for somebody for the first time. If they ask me for the, my business card, I know I did a good job. So always have those business cards available. Um, keep them up up to date and so forth with correct information. I can show you some examples of some that people showed up and they had to handwrite the little handwritten business card that got turned in for the, the event and I'm like, maybe you shouldn't have come this week. Maybe you should wait a week and got some. <laughs> Always better to show up than not at all. Well, granted, but we're back to the first impression thing. So if you didn't know this, I do make a compilation of the business cards that I try to show at the beginning of the meetings. And I think there was one in this, this group. But uh, it was a handwritten one. I know it's in the other one. 
Okay. Here's one. <laughs> oh. What's he do? I don't know. He's got a Gmail account. Very unprofessional. I mean, it's okay to have one, but domain names are about twelve dollars. So you know, a little bit of investment would make me know what he does. As it is right now, I can't remember. He's a roofer. He he is. That's right. But you know, I haven't seen him back to the meeting to get his real card. So that's what I have when He's we do. Not a roofer anymore. He no, might not be. Right now. He could be on the roof and not out marketing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's kind of one of my pet peeves. And uh, I'll just go ahead and just you know, readable. You, you probably met her here. Phone numbers easily readable. Um, this becomes more important as I age, <laughs> uh, where you can read the information. You know what they do. Uh, if you have the room, or if you have a nice photo, put the photo there or your logo. That's always good. Uh, this is somebody, they, they use both sides of their, and I'm trying to discourage that because a lot of times they'll just make photocopies of the cards. If you put all your vital information on one side, that's important. There's some others. There's one with the picture and so forth. But each one, the more readable it is, the more it stands out and it stands in your, and if you have a photo with it, it helps them keep the name with the face. So, just a few examples there. Um, so things I've learned, the business cards is, is kind of one of my pet peeves. Um, you know, your name, paint, name of business, contact phone number, photo or logo. Additional things to remember, we had somebody do this yesterday to us. Uh, they showed up late to the meeting, they were about 10 minutes late. They went through the meeting and they left early. Like, sure. Why'd you come? <laughs> you need to, you know, plan, a, you know, appropriate time for the meeting. And a lot of good business takes place after the meeting when you get a chance to chat with people, find out more information, or set up a one-on-one. -on -one. And if you left early, we didn't get a chance to do that. So um, don't don't crimp it too much. I've I've had you know a doctor's appointment or something. I had to leave, but that's more the exception than the rule. Uh, that's like once in a blue moon. Uh, have your 30 second speech prepared and timed. Uh, I know I try to vary mine a lot, but I keep in mind that 30 second time frame. And if I hear that somebody ring a bell or click on a glass, I wrap it up real quick and sit. So I may not even throw my slogan in at the end. I just, you know, it's important to keep everybody, respect everybody's time. Um, Pick a meeting that matches your target audience. Most of the meetings I'm involved with are small business owners. Um, they meet in various parts of the city. Um, I, I'm involved in the North Dallas Chamber, the East Dallas Chamber. I've been to a few ribbon cuttings recently that were well attended. You get a chance to meet other people in those. Um, this group, I've got another group uh, that meets Wednesdays and Fridays. It's earlier in the morning. I have a really good group that meets on Thursdays. It's about six, we had 63 people yesterday. But again, every one of them are small business owners. Um, they're very well attended. And um, even the North Dallas Chamber, I helped lead the Lots of Leads group meeting. And they were impressed that I run it on time. <laughs> I end on time. I have an agenda, I have a purpose. They, they didn't even leave time for thank yous during the meeting because they were kind of, mm -hmm. they just, oh, we don't have time this week. And that's an important part of the meeting, I feel, for this type of meeting. So, um, meetup.com is a good place to find out about these meetings and put your RSVP in. Uh, chambers, there's over 200 chambers in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Just pick the one that you, you get along, you know, that you match with the best. Um, I, I tell people on the North Dallas Chamber, that it's a, lots of leads is one of their meetings, but they have other meetings like energy and education and health. And you, those events, you sometimes can run into two to 400 people. So it's a multifaceted event. Um, they're also non-exclusive. So if you're in an industry that's a little more competitive, like realtor, insurance, real estate, stuff like that, um, they're not going to exclude you from those. So, um, 
you know, things that you can do when you're looking at Meetup is research your audience, get to know, you know, read through their bios, get to know what they do. So when you meet them in person, you know a little bit about them. Participate. In, in every group that I participate in, I try to either be the person that's attached to the screen or help co-lead it, or I'm, I'm involved in some way. That just keeps me more involved um, and really helps make the group interesting. Like, for example, the East Dallas group that I'm a part of, everybody was putting their cards out on a table. And I said, I'll just go ahead and collect those and bring them back next week. And at first they said, don't do that, that's a lot of work and such like that. I said, well, no, it, these aren't free, you know. Everybody's taking the time to put these cards out. And so I have a little tub, I throw all those in. But we, every week we have 60, 55 to 65 people that show up every week because they know that meeting is well run, worth their time, and they get referrals out of it. So that's what makes it interesting. And then in my North Dallas group where we don't have... Normally during the meetup groups, I pop your uh, profile up for meetup, and if I don't have that, like in the North Dallas Chamber, I started scanning the business cards, and I just did a running slideshow of everybody's slide, yeah, or the, the business card. I do that now at the end of the meetings, if you notice, just so people can see some of the names that went by. I have to, I have to recompile those every so often, just to additions and people that quick coming. Uh, let's see, uh, one thing that I've run into recently is just, um, this kind of social etiquette thing is uh, when I'm at a meeting, this stays in my pocket and it's in, it's in vibrate mode, but it has voicemail so I can get back to those people or, you know, email I can respond to later. But I try to be respectful of the other people in the meeting, especially when people are doing the 30 second paying attention to them and so forth. Um, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And we had Veronica Seitz here recently and she added respect at the end of that. And I thought that was very true. So that's another thing. That's one of those things I learned my first year of one of the seminars I went to downtown as Brian Tracy talking. He's a lot of good insights. He's been in sales forever. And, now just does sales lectures, and uh, I hear that over and over again. No like and trust, and respect goes in there too. But you do, it's true because we're bombarded with so many ads per day. They can't fit enough ads, you know, along the TV. They have to crawl them along the bottom, stick them in the corner. Uh, my phone at home has become just a lot of random robocalls. I've got ro no more robo that eliminates a lot of them, but some of them still come through and I look at it and I'm not answering that. <laughs> and even my cell phone's that way too. So we're down to, who do you know? You're asking your friends, who do you know? I need a roofer, who do you know? I need a plumber, who do you know? I need my computer fixed, who do you know? So that's where we're at now. We're just, there's too much. So we need to know from reference, uh, who do you know? And once you're introduced into networking, um, are you promoting yourself or a company? Sometimes you're working with a company, you're the representative out there. Um, and even if you're self-employed, you're the representative. Are you promoting a product or service? That's usually one of the two. Do you have a passion? And this is one of those things that Tony Robbins always preaches on. It's like, are you promoting that passion? Or are you, are you pursuing your passion? I enjoy computers. I just and electronics. I just always have been that way. So for me it's easy. Some people, you know, it's more challenging, but for me it comes easy. Um, are you going through the motions just to receive a check? I have run into a few of those people. And I just like, I wish you were more passionate. <laughs> you know, but it really helps if you, if you enjoy what you do, then the entire day goes by without even thinking, oh, I'm not looking at the clock waiting for it to turn five o'clock. I just can't even wait to get up nowadays. Um, if you lack the passion, you're going to struggle. Networking may be a challenge for you, but you're going to have to either figure out how to make it work or become passionate about what you do. That's the key. Uh, some people settle for a job to pay the bills. Um, I've, had, I've got a couple of brother-in-laws that fall in that category, and uh, 
after a while, I just get tired of listening to them complain. You know, it's like, just stop what you're doing and do something else. And move on. This is not the job you were meant to be. The other thing is what makes you unique. I brought, <clears throat> I don't bring this out very often. This is my, uh, my book of certifications, stuff I've done over the years. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of unique ones in here. How many people have their certification from on TR Sandy? <laughs> Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Do you remember them? Yeah, I was Scale Town, right. Plaza America. So Man, we call those trash yep. Yeah. Yep. But some of those are really well built. And then I worked with Commodore. You've heard of them. Yep. Yep. So I was the regional merchandising manager for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. So I was the one guy that was hired by Commodore to go around store to store and make sure stuff was working when you walked in. And somebody left this behind in their desk. So I took it back. <laughs> uh, I spent, I started in to support at uh, Baylor Hospital. The title was, we need somebody to answer the phones. It wasn't even called tech support yet. So I got hired to do that because I could speak English and I didn't speak in a lot of acronyms, <laughs> jargon. Uh, I went to work for another company called Stream and we supported, I got over the help desk portion. There were different contracts with the help desk and we supported everything that they sold. So this entire list of software, which actually boiled down to about eight products that people would call in on. And it was always funny to me because one of them was Harvard Graphics and the solution was always exit, exit out of the program, clean out your temporary stuff, uh, defrag and restart and everything worked fine. <laughs> And I never had it on my computer. I had it. But, and then I started into my Microsoft, you know, years of Microsoft. And uh, it was like my MCSE, all that stuff like that. And then I even went into, uh, I had my A+, my Server+, Plus, my CCNA. I've got more certifications than anyone will pay me for. <laughs> so, um, but that makes me unique. I'm a... They call it a subject matter expert out at Microsoft. So if you ask me various questions about technology, I could probably either figure it out or tell you. So and if I don't know, I'll say, let me look it up. Things to do at each, but that's something you want to do in your area too. Mm -hmm. Become the expert so people ask you the questions because they know you're a good source. Um, I try to learn something new every day. And there was a, a quote I liked from Mark Twain about the two best days in your life are the, the day you're born and the day you figure out why. Mm -hmm. So things to do at each network meeting. Always have a pen. And uh, I usually carry one or two in my bag, so I have one to use and a spare. Preferably, and, preferably one with your logo on it, right? Yeah, well, and Linda can help that. Help that happen, yeah. I told her I'm getting low. Um, and then take notes. You know, I like space for you. Take notes if you need. Um, I like, you know, if I'm not attached, I, I like for people to move around, not sit in the same spot every time. That way you get to know the rest of the room. Um, and sometimes you get in a, maybe you're in a conversation and you need to mingle some more. And... Uh, Somebody will walk in that you know, but the person you're talking with, I do this a lot at uh, VIP Coffee. Oh, let me introduce you to so-and-so. And, -so. and um, then I'll just let this conversation begin. They say, oh, okay, I'm gonna let you two talk and I'm gonna go mingle some more. Or I'll, I'll say, you know, nice to meet you. I'm gonna, you know, we're at the beginning. We're, I just wanna, we're gonna go mingle some more so we get to meet more people. So some way to just, break off the conversation and continue with other people. But just get a chance to meet more than one person. This is something Dave always talks about, and I, I also believe it. Be a giver, not a taker. I get people all the time, since I do the names and the rosters in some of my groups, they'll call me up and say, who was that person that came to the last meeting that was looking for a job, or that was, part, or was a student looking for summer work? You know, and I've got that card scanned or the roster with me. I scan all of the rosters that get handed out and they're on my Carbonite. I can refer to them through Carbonite. So I try to keep up with all that information. Uh, 
And then when I come in, when I'm out in people's homes and I see something that need they may need, and I know somebody that could help provide that, I'll make sure I pass that information along. So, so this hand, you all are great resources. So I always like to share you with my other people that I work with. Be involved. Uh, set up one on ones with people you don't know yet. Uh, again, try to break out the clicks. Try to meet the rest of the room. And you, sometimes you build up these synergies with people you didn't even know. So this is something I've learned. Uh, hidden gems. Uh, sometimes my competitors become good referral sources for me because they may focus on business only, and I do home home computer repair, and they don't want to get into that area. And for me, it's great because they're they're quick, thankful, write a check, lather, rinse, repeat. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> there's no invoicing, waiting for it to get paid, and all that stuff. Um, I had a, another gentleman that I helped early on that was at my church. He was out of work. He had like a Windows 98 machine back in the day. And uh, I was like, well, here, let me help you. I don't know if I gave him one that had XP or helped him get up to Windows XP, but that enabled him to get a job. And then from that, I could count probably 10 or more referrals that he's given me. So it's just been an endless supply. We try to give, but then it comes back to um, Well, I get a lot of quick questions. That's everybody's favorite phrase. Can I ask you a quick question? <laughs> and uh, that turns into countless referrals. Um, and people get to know me. And say, if you have a computer question, call Mark. If we're asking anyone at the retail store or calling somebody on uh, like AT&T or Time Warner phone support and some of my customers say well I spent four hours on the phone with you fill in the blank here um, I still didn't have it they don't solve it I'm there for five or ten minutes and I've got it solved it wasn't that hard but they were working from a list they weren't listening to them <laughs> they were going through have you turned it on turned it off some, some simple things and I can see those right off the bat. Okay, back to be the best at what you do. Um, become the subject matter expert. I talked about that. Um, each of our fields may have certifications in them. You know, pursue them if you can. Uh, that just sets you apart from someone that's casually in that field. Leaders are readers. We hear that a lot at some of our meetings. I try to have a book on my nightstand that I'm reading. <coughs> still working on the uh, Walter Isaacson, Ben Franklin. It's interesting how much stuff he was doing in France that we didn't hear about in history class. Um, take care of yourself. Get a good night's sleep. This is something I've been working on this, this year, trying to get more sleep. Uh, there's very few things at night that I need to stay up and watch TV on. Um, be better, yeah, daytime too. So anything that's worth watching, I usually record and watch without commercials. Um, I'm getting myself up in the morning, taking a walk around the neighborhood, um, and 70% of the CEOs make time for exercise and reading. It's just part of their routine, and it's a good practice. My brother-in-law just retired last month, and he's eight months older than me. But he, he had worked himself up to vice president and executive vice president at Chevron, so he's set. <laughs> he's <is> set. <laughs> he has three homes, and now the decision, where are you going to live? <laughs> it's, it's based on taxes right now. Okay, so uh, back to the what certifications would benefit your, pro your profession, and you know what those are. Um, so the takeaways. Uh, this is something I preached all the time as I, when I was at Microsoft. I couldn't follow any of these rules. But, um, when I have a meeting, I try to make sure we always start on time. I want you out on time. I respect your time, too. Um, you, we have an agenda on the rosters that we hand out. There's, a, there's, there's an agenda back there that we're trying to adhere to and keep you on time. And have a purpose. If there's really not a reason to meet, skip it that way. You know, if it's a holiday or something, we're not going to meet. You know, we'll just be smart. Um, or if it's severe weather or something, you know, that's, uh, we don't have it here, but if there was flooding or something like that. Um, respect people's time and let them 
that goes a long way in them coming back. And if you attend a good network meeting, invite others. Tell them about the good ones you found out about, and that helps them find the ones that they need to be involved with. We were doing that earlier, just sharing the wealth. <laughs> Uh, one on ones, we've talked about those, about not turning those into sales events. Um, is the, a good indicator of a good group is when you see guests. And you want to see some guests. You don't want to see the same people every week, week after week. You want additional people to join you and, and to seek you out. Uh, that's just a sign that you have a good meeting and and those people are people you want to take an interest in and get to know in the one-on-ones. And then find out how you can be, what, what becomes that. Uh, so these referrals are not to, I mean the one-on-ones are not to build, are not, not to do a sales presentation. That's the number one set. You want to get to know them. Is this somebody I trust? Is this somebody I have some commonality with? Is this something I share some experiences with maybe? I run into people that went to the same college I went to, um, grew up in the same town. I ran into one customer, she grew up three blocks from where I grew up, just around the corner. Mm -hmm. About 10, 10 years in difference, but oh yeah, <laughs> I could have walked to your house from where I live. Um, so see what you have in common with them, where they're from, why they do what they want to do, what motivated them to get into that business. Um, the family life when they're not working, what they like to do. And I kind of have a rule. If, you, if a one-on-one -on -one turns into a sales presentation, I'll just say, I'm done, and I get up and leave. And you're welcome to do the same, because it's not supposed to be that. If they want a sales presentation, they need to tell me up front, and I need to be interested and acknowledge that. But I don't do that. It's like spam. Yeah, it's like spam. Right. It's not what I'm here for. Spam tastes good, though. Yeah, popular. It's very popular in Hawaii. <laughs> okay, uh, over time, the things you can do to fail. Um, the people that show up once, gather business cards, and want to spam everybody. Eh, that's a losing thing. Don't do that. We'll even invite you not to come back if you do that. Um, they show up once or twice. They don't really have a clear message when they get up to the 30 second. They don't know what to say. Um, but the question we all have to answer when we're doing that is, why us? You know, I do computer repair. You may know somebody else that does computer repair. Why would somebody want to call me versus Geek Squad or versus Staples or somebody else? Because you're the lifeguard of the technology. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I could probably solve it. <laughs> Sometimes I, I challenge them. Okay, so you gotta answer that why you in your 30 second. Um, and you, that's especially true for people that are, you may have competition in the same room. Um, there's some people you just can't hear, they don't speak loudly enough, or they don't speak clearly enough, and you, you're wondering what was their name, or I can't understand what they're saying. So work on your presentation skills if you need to, join Toastmasters. Um, Use your outdoor voice when you're up in front presenting. Uh, don't mumble. I have to keep remembering that some days. Don't, just don't mumble. Uh, dress professionally for the occasion. Be branded or in appropriate attire for what you do. Uh, and I tell the men to save the shorts for the after hours of bed, not, not during the day. But <laughs> depends on if it's 100 degrees out sometimes. <laughs> I have to something. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to point you out. But... You had one on the other day. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes your profession needs it, especially in this weather. So it, 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 I said appropriate for your profession. Yeah. Uh, here's, another... here's my day off. Yeah, it's Friday. Uh, bad business card experience, appearance. That's we kind of went through that, showing you readable fonts, please. Readable. Especially, don't get real creative with uh, background colors and colors that <laughs> just kind of blends in. And if you were to photocopy it, it all comes out gray. <laughs> you can't even read it. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I always point to, um, you know, if you can, get a domain name. My gosh, they're cheap. Actually, like 12 bucks a year. And then it makes it look 
more professional. It's you. You have full control over it. And I'm not trying to figure out this week. Somebody's got a Yahoo account. Yahoo's in splits or being acquired by Verizon and being shunned by AT&T. So I don't even know how to change it right now. I've tried a couple of things and it's not working. Um, no website, email, or social presence. Jenna, would you like to say something about that? <laughs> Is that like a no-no in today? They don't exist. They don't, they, exist. they don't exist. I mean, at least some kind of landing page or something. Something to page. show you're there, right? A Facebook page, a LinkedIn page that's built around um, a scheduling page, like Book Like a Boss. Mm-hmm. If not, and that's fine, sometimes, like, do about business cards and website. I would rather a client go out and sell something first with no technology, no business cards, no nothing. Right. So they can define a sales process and can work around. But after, like, a month, you've got to have something where you don't exist. Yeah. You've been in business for five years. Like, yeah, you need to. You got to <laughs> that wasn't the first thing I did. First thing I did was get out and sell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you had to have some business you cards have no at business least. If to, you're not selling. Right. <laughs> you got to make it economically feasible to do what you do. So, but that's something you have to build as you go along. So you have to have that presence or people think you don't exist. Millennials don't think you exist unless you have that. So you have to have that. Not picking on millennials. Just saying that's how they mark, that's how they justify what you do. Um, let's see, I'm about down to... You know all this and like another group, but can't find one. Okay, this is something I added this morning. So you can start your own group. I've done this a couple of times, and it's, it can be done. Meetup.com, will tra- well, they, they will charge you something to get started. They'll help promote it, too. So uh, the first thing you have to do before you do that, though, is you need to find a venue. And I remember we went through the displacement with... Uh, You're fine. Uh, yeah when we were down at um, the Egg and I. And they just all of a sudden, I walked in one day and the windows were off, the doors were off, the screen was missing. I'm like, what's going on here, you know? And they said, oh, they came in and made a change. They just, they're, they're taking away the meeting room. I'm like, okay. We put up with it for what, three or four weeks? Until so we found another place. Yeah. yeah, but we quickly, after the meetings were going around scouting out other places, this was one of the few places we found that had a separate meeting room had a screen on the wall. I mm-hmm. love that, and uh, we could meet. They also have free internet. That's nice. But you gotta find a venue that meets where you you know in your vicinity where you may want to meet. Um, appropriate meeting space allow for growth. We outgrew this quickly, so we started the Friday session in addition to the Wednesday. Um, if it's at a meal time, they really you don't hear about it, but they expect us to you know buy a certain amount of food or else they wouldn't give us a room. Mm-hmm. So you need to be respectful of the place that you're having the venue at. Uh, tip well, <laughs> you know, take care of the waitresses and such. But, um, you know, buy food. They aren't giving this room away for free. So I always make a point to eat something or, you know, pay for coffee or something like that. Um, I had one occasion where they decided it's gonna be $14. And, you know, if you ordered coffee, it was $14. And uh, you, you can lose a lot of people quickly if they do that. So, again, we're back to the follow the four rules of meetings. They are, don't look at the screen. <laughs> What's the first rule? Time, time, have an agenda, and have a purpose. Right. Yeah. Very good. Very good. good I did throw a quiz in there. <laughs> um, and Dave's real good at this. He negotiate for space. Um, you know, you work out the agreement about how many meals do we need to buy or, you know, what's what's available. A lot of our mixers, you do a great job on, you know, we get some free stuff for having the event there. No. Um, and most of all, make your meetings affordable, fun, and um, meaningful. You know, people meet the people they need to meet, and it's cost-effective. They'll come back, but don't uh, don't make it too expensive. The other tips, uh, you got to build your group. So when we got moving and uh, some of the people that were helping out were getting busier, and I, I quickly tapped Dave to help me out with leading because I can't, I can't type and lead at the same time. So he helped out in that, that fashion. We were at a meeting on Wednesday, and uh, 
Jesse that normally takes money and keeps time had to get up. He had a customer emergency he had to run off to. I turned to Ryan who sits across from him and said, hey, Brian, you're the, you're the Jesse for today. Collect the dollar and, and keep time. And he just jumped right into it. That's the Thursday morning. Uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Wednesday. So I always look for ways to incorporate people into what we do just so that they feel involved. So don't feel, don't be afraid to delegate. That's a management thing. Um, so another meeting one time was uh, a meeting that fell apart. They, they couldn't start on time. They always ran long. They were just wandering all over the place. And no one was actually leading, or the you know one leader would be there one week, and another leader would be there the next week. There was no continuity, and uh, the low attendance caused the the restaurant to say, "Hey, we we can't have you here anymore. You know, we booked another group that wants to meet here." And so they just clumped, they, that group folded. So you got to be respectful of the the venue. You got to make it meaningful to the people, but it's a I think it's a good marketing. A good way to build your business. Why I network? You're like family to me. I gotta say that. Mm -hmm. You all are like family. I, I look forward to seeing each of you every time I come. Um, I appreciate getting to know, you know, what motivates you, how your independent mindset that makes you a small business. I don't have that association now with people that are on W-2s because they, they just show up for the check. Um, and things I've learned about small businesses is we're more involved with, you know, doing more than what the bigger companies can do. We have a personal interest in customer satisfaction, and some companies don't care. They don't even talk about it. And it's like, what makes them your customer then? You gotta make them happy. Uh, my best corporate weekly meeting is never as good as these meetings. You know, these are fun. Some of those were beat downs. So, you know, the best one of the weeklies doesn't even match this. They became negative and it was a pain to go to. And they, we, a lot of times we didn't even need to have them, but they had to have It was on their schedule to have a weekly meeting with their subordinates. Um, I've met many interesting people over the years. I've got um, uh, Mel Renfro is one of my customers, and he's every last few years of Super Bowl parties invited me over for that unless he's got unless he gets invited to a Super Bowl party he always puts a caveat unless he gets taken to the Super Bowl but uh, that's, that's a nice you know more people than I've ever met sitting in my cubicle at Microsoft <laughs> um, someone uses the expression with I, I understand they're they're working or retired or something they said they said I don't get paid till Friday you know I Turned down at one time, I said, really? Isn't every day payday? Mm -hmm. so, so my model is kind of a lather, rinse, repeat model. You know, just take care of the customer, make them happy, get paid, go on to the next customer. Huh. I don't do many invoices. Questions? Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've been working on it for eight years. <laughs> it's not like I woke up this morning and just said, oh, I need to talk about something. Yeah, like I said, Mark is a wealth of information. Uh, the interesting thing that I find, and you, you can stand up here, because okay. if, if you do have any questions, we've got a few minutes for questions. And Mark is, um, you know, has, is a wealth of information. As you can tell, he talks about using his outside voice. But his outside voice is a little quieter than my inside inside yeah. voice. Yeah. So so, I have to work on it. so but but Mark, I mean, would you 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 you're an introvert, right? You're basically an introvert. I mean, okay, he is. An introvert. I have my geek. He doesn't know I have me. my geek moments. But but, but, but an introvert is not a bad thing. Introvert is when you he, he's he's learned through his. I, I will say this about him. He's learned through his business and growing and networking um, that. That that's something that he needs to adapt and learn and be able to speak, be able to stand up, be able to meet new people. I mean, we all have to overcome success is overcoming limitations or overcoming challenges, right? We all have our challenges. We all do. And so, Mark, you know, he's different than me. My challenge is to know when to shut up. But <laughs> but uh, but but I'm an, I'm an extrovert. So I get energized by this, and this is exciting to me, even if I don't ever accomplish anything. 
but uh, but Mark is very very. I mean, I would strongly encourage you if you to have if you haven't had a one on one with Mark, then you've really missed it. You know, because really he's he's got a lot of insights and they come in a very very nice way and his story is great and uh, again I, I just want to you know make sure we we really thank him for all that he's done for this group as well as just the, the opportunity to do this can you see how you can take what you do and then share it with everybody else and it'd be it'd be valuable mm -hmm. I mean what you have to know or what people have to know to buy from you can be a 30 minute education right mm -hmm. you can teach people so how I mean I would like to hear sometime why and how you buy promotional items from Linda you wouldn't you wouldn't everybody like to hear that yeah no, I'm serious I mean we all are out there there's a lot of people out there and a lot of us do business with her and I'm not picking on her only just because it popped into my mind I love her and the thing is you know if you're networking understand how to take it to the next level understand how to serve the 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 room and anybody else that comes in contact with you and understand what the value is, your story, and what brings you to the table. Mark it on all of those things and much more. And if you do want, I will tell you, if you want to start a networking group, you know, get some help. I mean, I've seen them. I've been into a, a, early on, probably a few years back, I started pinging in to meet up groups and networks to see. And, I, and there's some pathetic groups out there. And even if you're start, <laughs> I, I don't care if it's your first meeting. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be pathetic. Find somebody who's run a meet, meeting, you know, run a networking group, and get them to at least consult with you, advise, help you until you can get it going. Because, again, that just becomes noise and, on. And we're up. fortunate to have you too, because there's been times recently that I've just been sure. busy, and you were able to carry on, and in my absence, and he's technically retired. He does well, because so, yeah. he loves socializing and getting to meet people. So yeah. he loves coming here to meet more and more people. So it's you know it's your social it could, outlet. It's synergistic, right? Yeah. yeah right. Right. But uh, I appreciate your help in keeping Linda? the group going. Uh, just two points. One, uh, I don't feel personally that you have to spend money to network. Right. There are a lot of groups like Not this much. where it's just a dollar, two dollars to pay for the meeting room or the meetup group. You don't have to spend boo-coos and bucks to network. You can find groups that are available. The other thing, the one point I think you maybe just skirted around was stick with it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Consistency. I, mm -hmm. Coming I to the skipped groups over on a regular. I've come to this group. It's got to be five years. Yeah. You know, I might not be able to make it a day or so here, but I, you know, you, you've got to know people on a personal level right. before. First of all, that. I will entrust my friends or people that ask me, hey, do you know a good painter, do you know a good car washer? Uh, you know, it's in the handout, I just didn't right, mention it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But consistency so that we get to know, like, and trust you and trust sure. you is really important. You can't just split in, expect referrals, or then split out again. It won't it won't yeah, it doesn't work in any group. No. And frankly, if you don't find a group to be productive, then right. probably it's just it's not a match for you that's not a group of people and that's awesome point Linda because really and Mark and I talk about this all the time it's it's come into a group that you find that you can serve and you want to be around the people I mean we have 800 people that have been through here in the last three years or whatever for on meetup right and we've had uh, we, we serve 50 to 70 people a week average between the two meetings I was looking at some of those statistics and this and, is the only group I'm in that does Facebook Live, right? This, this but we're always trying to grow, right? Mm -hmm. Gratitude, giving, growing. We, all, if you want to be happy and grow as a group, as individuals, that's we got to be doing those things. So we're always looking for ways that we can add more value, provide, provide more. But but you're exactly right. Be in there, and the reality of it is, if you come into this group, and I'll say this to the Facebook audience as well, is if you come into this group, you don't like this. It's not us. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> It's not us, it's you. Because really, the reality of it is, we have 800 people that have been through this group, and we serve about 50 a week, every week. And so if you don't, you, know, you, you, you need to leave. Go ahead and leave, that's okay. But then ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? Because frankly, this group is an awesome group, very diverse. It's very much um, able to support any business, that want, any person who wants to come in here and build, build a network. So Build a relationship, we'll build your yeah. business. Anyway. 
So that's it. Uh, again, let's give Mark another hand. That was awesome. Awesome. I, I, Mark is such a humble guy. I appreciate him so much. Uh, a couple things, just announcement-wise. As he said, we meet on Wednesdays, next Friday. Jenna, you want to give us two seconds on what you're going to teach on next, next Friday? Because we don't have it on the calendar yet, and she's got to owe me a paragraph. So I do owe you a paragraph. So tell um, us tell us what you're going to do next Friday. So it's not that often I find something that's being done that's unique in business. Most of the things when it comes to marketing, sales, or anything like that, you've seen 101 million times, right? right? It's the same stuff. Either just don't listen, don't think of work, try to something, right? So picked up something new just actually taking from the acting and character writing for books and novels if you're looking to grow your business above and beyond yourself so it's something that's sellable or something that um, you, you know, want to be past yourself you don't want to just be um, Jenna Afgar marketing you want to be warfare marketing how do you do that in such a way where you still keep the heart and the soul of the business or if you are a bigger business or working for a bigger business, how do you put the heart and soul back in it? The example that I best think of is Apple. When Steve Jobs left, Apple died. They brought Steve Jobs back, Apple flourished. Steve Jobs dies, downhill. Simple little process, it doesn't even take that long. It actually took me eight hours to do for myself, but to explain it, I can do it in 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, and just because it almost becomes like a, you have to reach inside yourself and then acknowledge a few things because it, it breaks it down and makes your business human without being tied to a human. So I don't know how better off to explain So it. you want to understand what all that is. That was awesome. That's perfect. 30 seconds. 30, that's the yeah, best Okay, so, so what we're, yeah, so as you see, in these tra and if, you, if you've been, all, bring your seatbelt when you come for the training because Jenna yeah, goes absolutely. over a ton of stuff in a short period of time and be prepared to take notes and everything else. But she does a great job uh, as my partner at Business Growth Network, and, and we're, we're doing a lot of things there, and we're always trying to find things that are really going to add value. And as we said before, somebody said, you said it, you know, it doesn't have to cost, networking doesn't have to cost a lot of money. All we do with this group and all we're doing with Business Growth Network and everything we do is not for profit. We're not doing this to make money because that ends up taking over the priority of the group. All of a sudden, it's all about getting more members, getting, and you don't really care as long as you get more members. And, 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 and so right. I can't, I don't want to, of yeah. course. So and we're I, about if providing. Like suffer, if you don't know how to answer questions or what to do in your business, that's what next week will help you. Right. Because it will give you a better frame of reference to narrow down all your options. Right. So, so what I'd ask you to do, we started a new month. This always happens on Meetup. Go to the meetup calendar. If you're planning to attend the meeting, whether it's Wednesday or Friday, then go to the meetup and go ahead and RSVP that you're going to be there. The reason being is because people aren't coming here just because they want to meet me or meet you know a few other people. They're coming here to meet you. And if other new people are going to come in, they're going to look and they're going to see, oh, you know, Randy's going to be here. I'm going to be there. They're going to say, Karen's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Say, Mark's going to be there. I'm going to be. They 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 look for people with their profiles and stuff like that, that at least they can feel comfortable knowing there's somebody else like them there. They shouldn't just be looking for those people. I, you know, I tend to, you know, I'm, I'm not real fond, you know, I, if you're going to market or try to get to know people and learn something in a specific industry, yeah, I'll focus on that. I like the diversity of this group. So anyway, so we got that going and we got Jenna's training and um, I think we're pretty, where are we at on time? Uh, 101. 101, right on time. Okay, we didn't get a chance to do thank yous. If there's somebody you want to thank, again, I want to do one thing before we leave. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ryan. Happy birthday to you. Great. Great studio audio. With some automation that you know, MailChimp and you know, Cross Contact cannot do easily. I can automate an email to go back to you and say, hey, why don't you go answer your email? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, duh. Send you a text message. 